Okay, uh, I'd like to start off by saying welcome to the brave new world of bean counting. Um, as I was going over the, uh, the agenda last night one more time, uh, it, it's really dawned on me that today looks like it's going to be information overload. Uh, this is probably the longest webcast that Tom has ever put on. He's probably going to have the most amount of people uh, attending this as Tom has put on. So I wanted to give you something else to focus on for a while. I want you to envision this jar as being the Chesapeake Bay. These are all of the BMPs that are installed in the Chesapeake Bay. Now, seeing that I have a room full of engineers and planners, you will have until the end of the day to tell me exactly how many beans are in that jar. The person who comes the closest gets an adult beverage for me tonight. <laughs> okay, hopefully between today's webcast as well as the joint uh, CSN-CWP webcast on April 17th, you will start to get a flavor for what we hope are the rules of the road for local governments to achieve and document the nutrient and sediment reductions that are necessary to achieve, to, to achieve the Bay TMDL reductions. Uh, you'll notice that I use the word document. The context of that phrase has taken on a whole new meaning in light of the new generation of phase one and phase two permits that are being issued. So how are the rules being guaranteed or generated? Hopefully through an open and deliberate, consistent BMP credit process. The intent of the Urban Stormwater Work Group's focus over the last couple of years has been to develop those BMP efficiencies for the Bay model that are the heavy hitters in what will be the local government implementation plans. The BMP expert panel process was established to provide a more scientifically defensible uh, process to the establishment of nutrient and sediment removal rates to the BMPs utilized within the Bay model. A mainstay of the process is the complete documentation of the science and the decisions making process that had gone into it. Gone are the days of where we used to send a half page memo to the modeler saying this is the BMP efficiency for whatever BMP. The process begins with the establishment of a volunteer panel of experts in the particular BMP under study. These experts range from people within the watershed to some, some of them outside of the watershed. The panel undertakes a rigorous review of the scientific literature that is available for that BMP in order to answer the questions and the charge that are given to the panel to begin with. From there, they undertake many hours of discussions, and when I mean many hours, I mean many hours and eventually they come to a consensus on the removal methodologies that are going to be used to generate the BMP efficiency. All of this information is put in the form of a draft report, which then the expert panel chews on for another period of time. Once the report is finalized, it is then passed on to the Urban Stormwater Work Group, as well as any other source work groups on the Bay Program that may have an impact on by that BMP. Once the urban work group and those other source work groups are satisfied with the report, it is passed on to the watershed technical work group. It is the watershed technical work group's job to review the BMP methodologies to ensure that they will work well within the framework of the Chesapeake Bay model. It's, it also reviews that BMP process in order to develop the tracking and reporting systems that are necessary by the states. Once the report receives the blessing of the Watershed Technical Work Group, it's passed on to the Water Quality Goal Implementation Team, which reviews the BMP credit in the context of the state's policies and programs. And this is often where we hit a little, little pot or hole in the road. Only after they get approval will the BMP credit then be available for progress reporting. So as you can see, the process is not exactly for the faint of heart, and the process is frequently full of road bumps and redrafting. As 
As you've listened to the presentations today, you will notice that many of the more recent BMP methodologies are moving towards site-specific criteria. And this is where the rub enter enters the picture. How the states interpret site removals in lieu of a lump parameter model whose defensibility becomes more questionable as the scale of the data is reduced down is becoming an issue. Most of the states are just now trying to figure out how they will incorporate the BMPs into the reporting systems, and that's assuming they already have one. There are several states that are still trying to develop tracking systems for all of these BMPs. Oh, this slide's out of, okay. Uh, one important caveat to this is that you should ch always check with your state stormwater staff. Different states are tracking different information, even though there are certain recommended informational groups that they have been asked to track. But not all states have those systems in place, so it really is necessary that you check with your, your staff members. To date, uh, expert panels uh, have, have gone through processes for state stormwater performance standards, urban stormwater retrofits, urban fertilizer management. We're still in the process of working on the urban stream restoration, and, and that is actually supposed to go to the water quality goal implementation team this Monday, but I'm not going to hold my breath on it. Uh, illicit discharge detection. Uh, enhanced erosion and sediment control, shoreline erosion, uh, and urban filter strips are all in process. I'd like to really thank Tom and Cecilia for all of their, their, their leadership. Um, it's a lot of hard work pulling together these panels and these reports. There's a lot of time involved. Um, all of the expert panel reports are available on CSN's website as well as a lot of other worthwhile information that you should take a look at. So, with all of that being said, let's actually start in the heart of the matter today, and we'll start off with the state performance standards.